Welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Lynn Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. And on today's show, we're going to talk about growing a lawn from grass seed. Next, we're going to discuss fall lawn fertilizer, step four, and seed starting fertilizer. And after that, we're going to talk about feeding your shrubs in fall. In our fourth segment, we'll talk about planting mums, pansies, ornamental cabbage, and kale. After that, we're going to tell you the best way to plant your bulbs. So stay tuned. I'll be back in the garden after these short breaks. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Does your garden have planting insurance? It can now with Biotone Starter Plus from Espoma. It's the ultimate starter plant food. The secret is a special blend of natural organic plant food, beneficial microbes, and mycorrhizal fungi. The result? Plants grow faster, roots grow deeper, flowers and vegetables flourish. Best of all, every Espoma product is safe for people, pets, and the planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you. Biotone Starter Plus from Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden, and you can still plant a lawn with grass seed. Yep, the oh. temperatures are finally getting a little yes. cooler. Oh, isn't that great? Right? Oh, that's <laughs> great. But it's all about soil temperature, not mm -hmm. air temperature. That's right. That gets seed to germinate. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as you have some moisture in the soil, moisture. it's going to come up. Yep, it's coming up. That's right. Mm -hmm. There's a few things that you need to know. Right. Um, first of all, every single seed by law has to have a tag on the back of the bag of grass seed. Wow. Or box. Uh huh. And it shows what the different types and varieties of seed that are in there. Okay. Um, for instance, I'm looking at one which is 29.75% ryegrass. Okay. And this is our Bloomers blend. Oh, okay. um, That's this ours. is the Township Turf. Township Turf. Yep. Is, it is the, we get the uh, varieties that are recommended from Rutgers, but it also works in Pennsylvania. Oh, cool. uh, it's basically for our region that Area. are best. Great. So this particular mix is 30% ryegrass, 60% tall fescue, and 10% uh, bluegrass. Mm -hmm. Now, just by knowing that, you're going to know where that seed will germinate. Where ryegrass um, is something that grows really quick mm. now it grows it can germinate in a week wow it's quick right and at temperatures where if it's 50 degrees grass seed still will germinate because okay. again it's a soil temperature that's right. warmer but you need to get it in contact with the soil that's right yep. if you don't have your seed in contact with the soil now can, can you let the folks know what germinate means maybe they, germinate kind of, yeah germinate is when the seed sprouts okay so you're getting a little green. Yep, because the way that seed works, and you have to keep it moist, mm -hmm. um, because seed will sprout actually a little root hair first, uh -huh. and then put the green grass that Up. everybody knows. Right. So, but um, you know, let me jump back here. So, if this bag that we're looking at has 30 percent ryegrass, that means 30 percent of it will be germinating in seven days. Wow. Pretty 60 percent of it will take about 14 days because that's what fescue and it's a, a good uh, fine bladed fine turf blade. type 
tall fescue, takes okay. about 14 days to germinate. Uh -huh. And that 10% that's in there takes up to 31 days, and that's bluegrass. Uh, a little later. A little bit mm -hmm. later. Um, we were talking a little bit about uh, bluegrass before mm -hmm. we went on, we and we were we actually poured some seed on on our papers yep, here did, yeah. and are probably making a mess in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> so, right. <laughs> yeah, we'll make sure we clean that up, right? That's right. <laughs> yeah, right. We're going to get green grass in here. Huh? That's right. Well, you know, it's a sports station. <laughs> that's uh, right. uh, we're, in the, we're in the ESPN studios. We're going <laughs> oh, on real boy. turf. Real turf here. Um, but the size okay. of the seed, like ryegrass and fescue are pretty much the same size. They're actually pretty big. Same size. But bluegrass, uh -huh. they're tiny seeds. Tiny, real tiny. Huh? Yeah, and if you take... The same amount of space, mm -hmm. for instance, like even if you just put it in the palm of your hand and you right. made a little well, mm -hmm. and you put solid bluegrass in that space, that you would have so many more plants uh -huh. of grass compared to if you had it with fescue. Wow. Because how many times would you say a fescue seed is bigger than a bluegrass seed from what you looked at? Five times? At least five, yeah. So if you have mm -hmm. five seeds mm -hmm. of bluegrass in the, in same, the same space mm -hmm. that it takes up for uh, either a rye, rye or a fescue, or a fescue. And that's five more plants. Mm -hmm. sure. So five to one. Five to one is big. Five to yeah. one. So Great. you know that's 5,000 to 1,000. Right. I mean, that's, that's a lot. It is a lot. That's a lot. It's a and that's often why sometimes if you get straight bluegrass mm -hmm. in a bag, uh, you wow. know, maybe you don't always want it. Because, yeah. for one, it takes a month to germinate. Wow, that's a long time. It, it is. <laughs> it is. One benefit with bluegrass mm -hmm. is that it will tunnel and it will it'll hold your turf secure. Mm -hmm. That it sends out tillers where it will go back down uh -huh. into the into the ground and it will anchor in and it will come back uh -huh. up as another blade of grass oh, and then okay. it will do that again and it knits all the way through it knits in that's why um even in fescue sod like uh -huh. the blend that we talked about is basically a uh, a good sod mix a fescue sod mix okay that the bluegrass mm -hmm. holds it together Mm -hmm. You would never be able to roll up sod if it was all fescue because it would all right. fall apart because it grows more as a like clump clumping together. Right, right. Yeah. So, Lan, a question: If there's a customer coming into the garden center and they want something for their lawn to seed with, right. how would you, you know, how would you approach, you know, that whole situation? And would you, you know, sun first? You said, first. you know, do you have sun or shade? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that. If they have shade, mm -hmm. real shade, not right. just it's it's shady, right? Because um, a sun and shade mix will grow in partial shade. Okay, our, the mix, our mix I just talked about will mm -hmm. will grow in partial shade. Right. Now you have a blend that's in front of you that's made for shade. That's correct. And that that's yeah. going to have probably um, chewings fescue and some other types of fescue, not tall. Fe it'll probably have some tall fescue. Yeah, it has some tall fescue in it. What's, yeah. what's in a, a good shade mix? Okay. And these yeah. are Jonathan Green. Jonathan Green, yes, product. Uh, uh, grass mm. seed, by the way. Right. This one has Gokonda tall fescue. Okay. How much? What's the percentage? 19.65%. Uh, ni okay. Okay. Toltec tall fescue. Right. Same amount. That's 40% so uh, far. Frontier perennial ryegrass, same amount. Hood chewings fescue. There you go. All right, 14.75, a little less. That's yours, but but uh -huh. again, right. smaller seed. Four, all right. So yeah. that will grow. That's the seed that will grow in the shade. I see. And what else do you have in there? Uh, Eugene creeping red fescue. That's 14, same amount. A little less, 14.7. So 30% of that is a shade, you know, only uh, seed. Okay, there you go. And that those other varieties are going to be shade tolerant. Mm -hmm. And the last one here is a deep blue Kentucky bluegrass. There you go. Yeah. And that's 9.82%. And that is the exact same uh, bluegrass that we have in bloomers blend, blend same township thing. turf oh, okay yep right. and again it it there are blues that are tolerant uh, of shady conditions but not like deep dark you know underneath oh, okay. trees sometimes sure. that's hard hard but that's another show all right <laughs> what we're talking about is is you need to get your seed mm -hmm. in contact with the soil that's right 
Yeah. Uh, we have a, um, a nice stretch right now because we're going to start getting more and more rain. Yeah. We went almost a month without a decent oh, rain. That's a lot. That's yeah. quite a bit. Yeah, it's Drying only this past soil. week did we finally get some mm-hmm. rain. And it really wasn't a you know a deluge. We're yeah. hoping when that cold front came through, when it went from ninety five um, degrees yeah, this week, yeah, where right. it dropped thirty uh, or forty degrees. Oh boy! <laughs> so hopefully we get we'll get that back. We'll, we'll get it on a regular watering, and uh, that's why it's so good to seed this time of the year. It is perfect. But mm-hmm. if you don't get it in contact with the soil, you're wasting your money. That's right. Yeah. How would you do that? Well, you can get uh, a slit seeder, and you can rent them. By the way. That's right. Okay, at garden centers, uh, in uh, yeah, local different garden, garden centers, centers right? rental places, right? You know, mm-hmm. w- like why buy type rental places. Right. Um, call your local garden center; they'll know exactly That's who right. has them. If they don't, mm-hmm. uh, that a slit seeder is not a thatcher. No, a slit seeder will give you some benefits that you get from thatching, mm-hmm. but where a slit seeder is, think of it in multiple skill saw blades that <laughs> go through the soil, mm-hmm. dig a little trench. And drop your seed right behind it, and then yeah. it closes up. You know, nice. the next time it rains, and it, <laughs> right in contact with the soil. But also, what it does is, you know, like where we prune the tops of a plant, right? And it makes divisions, and it right. gets fuller. Yeah, that's what it does. The same thing happens to the root system when you use a slit seeder. That oh, you're going to oh, divide some of those roots, especially with bluegrass, uh-huh. and you're going to help to form even more more grass to help it fill in. So uh-huh. not only the grass seed helps. But also when you're going through decent grass and you have like patches of good grass right. where it hel- helps that as well. Oh, wow. That's great. Yep. Even that's pulls good. a little bit of thatch out. Mm-hmm. I'd leave it and just, yeah, just a little bit. leave it. And then when you mow, then you're, you'll pick, pick it up it then up. or it'll yeah, turn it into great. mulch. Wow. That's easy. It It is easy. Yeah. It is easy. It's got to push this. <laughs> but, but again, it's all about looking at that label uh-huh. and knowing that rye grass germinates mm-hmm. in, in a week, fescue right. takes about 14, 14 days, mm-hmm. and bluegrass takes about 31 days. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, all of those are shade, I would say part shade, part sun. Uh-huh. But then when you have a shade situation, you want to look for creeping red right. and chewing's fescue, and that's the shade type seed. You mm-hmm. want to make sure that that's in your mix if you have shade. Great. So in about a month's time, you should be all set to go, Len? Right. And again, we have rye in our blend, so it gives yeah. you something to take care of right away. Wow. So as you're taking care of the rye grass, right. the fescue germinates, and then all of a sudden the bluegrass germinates. Next step. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden you've got a beautiful, beautiful lawn. nice lawn, and oh. you start off in the spring with the crabgrass control, and uh-huh. then you do it again, right? Yep. Keep going. You do a second crabgrass control. Second, yep. But that's another show. That's right. All right. <laughs> we're going to be right back. Right after this, and we're going to talk about the different types of fall lawn fertilizer. Are you tired of mice moving into your home with you every fall? Would you like to keep them from coming into your home? Do you dislike using mouse killers around your kids and pets? Bonod has the answer, mouse magic. Mouse Magic is an all-natural mouse repellent that keeps mice from coming into your home, summer cabins, cars, boats, RVs, farm equipment, garden sheds, and more. Mouse Magic has a pleasant aroma, which smells like spearmint and peppermint, but mice hate it. Mouse Magic repels by smell and works as an irritant that drives mice away. Just use one throw pack per average size room, and you are mouse-free for up to two months. Available in a four-pack box or a 12-pack economy Ziploc bag. Bonide products are family-made in America. Mouse Magic can be found at these fine stores. Harleysville, Ace, Harleysville, Pennsylvania. Dublin Agway, Dublin, Pennsylvania. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Or go to bonide.com to find a retailer near you. Fall is for planting. Bloomer's Blend Township Turf Grass Seed is perfect for your lawn, no matter if you have sun or part shade. Township Turf germinates quickly in less than 10 days and provides a dark green, fine-bladed, durable turf. Township Turf is a blend of the best ryegrass, tall fescues, and bluegrass and looks so good many people think it's sod. Visit Bloomer's Nursery and let one of Bloomer's nurserymen help you lay out your next landscape project. Bloomer's has the finest selection of fall flowers. Hardy mums in multiple sizes, celosia, coxcomb, winter pansies, ornamental peppers, ornamental kale and cabbage, and all types of grasses. 
Bloomers has a frightening large selection of face pumpkins, flat stacking pumpkins, gourds, and fall decorating items. Come visit Bloomers, the store behind the radio program, open seven days. Go to www.bloomers.com. That's www.bloomers.com. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Hey, you know what? Uh-huh. I've told you how I hate the four-step program. You do? The four-step, <laughs> I, you know, oh. when you buy a four-step program right. in the spring, you get step one, which is crabgrass to truth, step two. But they are changing now because they all want to compete with the best price. So sometimes, right. like they dropped an insect control out of them. Uh-huh. What I'm getting at is that right now it's time to put step four right. if you haven't done it yet. Right. But we're going to talk about that in, in, in just a minute because a step four is very similar to a winterizer fertilizer. So winterizer, like Jonathan Green has mm-hmm. winter survival. Right. And that, that's one that, that we like very much. And, and right. it's almost identical. And actually it is their step four, four. in their lawn program. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, Scott's has, you know, step, step one, four. two, three, four. Mm-hmm. Uh, I recently had a um, someone get in touch with me. Uh, it wasn't necessarily call or she through Google. Oh, yeah. Google you know, <laughs> sent it through the submission through Google, and uh-huh. that she said she just put down a winterizer. Uh, it was it's the Scott winter fertilizer with weed and feed. Oh. Yeah, Something not a big fan. Yeah, not a big fan. Why would you do that, right? Well. I, it's one, it's because if she had leftover dandelions and wanted oh. to clean it up. And I, and I understand that part of it. Okay. But she also needed a seed. And her oh. question was, is that she just bought seed from us and wanted to know how long she had to wait. Oh, okay. <laughs> I unfortunately had to tell her she has to wait six weeks. Wow. Shame. If she Isn't used, it? like, the the, the Bonide uh-huh. uh, Weed Beater Ultra Spray. Right. You know, three weeks. Three weeks. And That's great. seed would be up, no problem. No problem. Six uh, weeks from now, we're in the middle of November. Yeah, it's going to be tough. <laughs> yeah, I mean, seed will germinate, but the problem is she has to worry about what happens in the in the spring. In the spring, right. Do I have ryegrass that is laying in the ground dormant oh, because no. the soil temperature was too, too cold, cold uh, to germinate? Right. 50 degrees soil temperature, grass will still germinate. When you get uh, below into the 40s, so it's what, kind of so what happens to just pauses. So what happens to that seed, Len? Does it, it just stays there. Just, and then it just stays it, there until it's called until it's, into the spring to start germinating, oh, and that's okay. usually March. But March. then that's when you're putting down your crabgrass control, control and, it, and it becomes the same thing. You're now, all of a sudden, you have to use a crabgrass control uh-huh. that will prevent crabgrass but also distinguish between regular grass seed Uh, okay so right what i would like everyone out there to do and i know that it's hard Mm -hmm. instead of buying all of your four step at once go each season and go to your independent garden center and ask what should be applied now okay you know and that way you know and it's custom blended for you like for instance the the person that contacted me if she said yeah i got my seed down late i'm not sure if it's all up Mm-hmm. I would say, hey, use this product instead of step one. Step one. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to use step one for seeding or right. or a crabgrass control for seeding. And that mm-hmm. you customize your program. And at an independent garden center, you can do that because right. they'll give you the answers you need. Hmm. Anyway, just, right. just wanted to bring that up. That's great. But step four, mm-hmm. okay? Step right. four is a fall fertilizer, right. which is equivalent to most starter fertilizers if okay. you ha- are you put if you're putting down seed mm-hmm. you can go ahead and put, use put that. this down mm-hmm. 
But there is a difference between a seed starter. Now, Julio, you have right in front of you, mm -hmm. right. right? That's the Jonathan, Jonathan Green. Green. And, you know, they changed their name of their product. It's, uh, it's cool. now, let's see, it's Jonathan Green, Green Up Green Seed. Up. Lawn food, well, too long. Jonathan <laughs> Green, lawn food for seeding and sodding. Wow. So this is a specific starter fertilizer for when you're seeding for seeding mm -hmm. or sod or sod yeah yep. anytime you're 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 trying to get your grass to, right. to new grass new lawn put in right now the difference between like a step four and that, that. is what that is? they went zero phosphate on all fertilizers uh, except for starters starter fertilizers. fertilizers right right so now this one right so on for instance the mm -hmm. the winter survival right has and remember, it's up, down, all around. That's right. So th uh, those numbers on the bag, they're mm -hmm. very important. They are. Up, down, all around. So the first number up is what, Julio? Nitrogen. Second number down. Is uh, phosphorus. Right. And then potassium is the last one. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that what happened is a few years ago, there was problems with the Chesapeake Bay. Oh, there sure. were issues where they went to a zero phosphate formula so there is zero phosphate wow. they were saying that they there's enough phosphorus in the soil that they were getting except oh. when you seed uh -huh. so the 10 0 20 that is in the winter survival survivor right it is good but, but what is in your starter fertilizer 18 percent of the uh, of the, uh, so phosphate. what's it? No, give me all uh, three. All three, 12, 18, and eight. So 18, 18 of something that you have 0% zero percent going through the entire year. Big difference. If you were putting down seed and you were doing a new program, mm -hmm. you know, without having to use a uh, four step program, I would have you using that. This. Because okay. it's got that 18% phosphorus in there that, there. that will help your roots, roots to systems, grow. Right. And that's what we want. That's a no-brainer, huh? Well, I don't know about <laughs> no-brainer. It, it, it requires people to know. Yeah, that's, that's the true. difference. Yeah. So again, right. if it's if you have a four-step program and you've got oh. a, a step four or a winter winter type fertilizer in your mm -hmm. seeding, go ahead and use it. Right. Um, if you, it's I don't know if it's early if. I would have probably put it down earlier, earlier. you know, yeah. beginning of September. Sure. Put that put that fourth step down beginning of September, and then if mm -hmm. you're seeding, go ahead and put that other that the starter fertilizer down. Down with it. Yep, and yeah. you could do it the same day. Oh yeah. You could put down your wow. seed Great. and your your starter fertilizer oh, or nice. winter fertilizer the same day without worrying about if there's going to uh, be a problem. It's not going to prevent your seed it. from from. Oh, uh, that's great. Yep. So. Mm -hmm. All right. If you've got questions, make sure you call the hotline. It can be yes. confusing. Mm -hmm. it can but remember be. those numbers on the bag. There's three numbers on three the numbers, bag, and yeah. it's up, down, all around. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, we like that Bonite product because it has more than just those three numbers. It has a, a micronutrient Nutrient. package in it. Uh, Jonathan Green, Bonite, they're the, yeah, the best. <laughs> they are. Yep. They are. They are the best. All right. We'll <laughs> be right back right after this. Fall is for planting. Bloomer's Blend Township Turf Grass Seed is perfect for your lawn, no matter if you have sun or part shade. Township Turf germinates quickly in less than 10 days and provides a dark green, fine-bladed, durable turf. Township Turf is a blend of the best ryegrass, tall fescues, and bluegrass and looks so good many people think it's sod. Visit Bloomer's Nursery and let one of Bloomer's nurserymen help you lay out your next landscape project. Bloomer's has the finest selection of fall flowers. Hardy Mums in multiple sizes, Celosia, Coxcomb, Winter Pansies, Ornamental Peppers, Ornamental Kale and Cabbage, and all types of grasses. Bloomers has a frightening large selection of face pumpkins, flat stacking pumpkins, gourds, and fall decorating items. Come visit Bloomers, the store behind the radio program, open seven days. Go to www.bloomers.com. That's www.bloomers.com. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix with EcoPeat is the perfect ready-to-use potting mix for all your succulents. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix is a blend of sphagnum peat moss, perlite, and EcoPeat. EcoPeat is a natural wood fiber from peat bogs. When added to Fertilome peat moss, it produces a superior professional substrate with an exceptional ratio of air, porosity, 
and water holding capacity. Fertilome succulent potting mix will ensure maximum drainage with ideal water retention. It's simply the best succulent mix on the market. Ask for Fertilome by name at your local garden center. Available at Daniel's Garden Center, Sumney Town Pike, Harleysville, Pennsylvania. Gaspers Home and Garden, 316 Tanyard Road, Richboro, PA. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. We are back in the garden, and we said it again in our last segment. Fall plants want to build roots, huh, Len? That's what it's all about. Yeah. They grow that top grow portion that. all the rest of the year, and now they're building roots. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not just your lawn that needs to be fertilized. You yes. need to fertilize your shrubs and your perennials because, yes. again, they're building roots. They're building roots. You may not see that activity, right. but it's yeah. going on underneath on. the ground. Yes, it is. Yep. <laughs> yeah. They yep. want to be fed. They got nutrients. Got to go in their root systems. <laughs> that's right. You know, holly tone should be used twice a year, right. and and that's an for acid loving plants. Why don't be be? Why don't you help out here, Julio, and tell me what is an acid loving plant? Anything over the pH level below six is acid loving. Okay, so the neutral is six to point oh to seven. So okay. below the, below the six point. You know, below six is, is going to be your uh, so acid. give me an example of some of those plants okay uh, a lot of your evergreens like uh, rhododendrons okay right. azaleas junipers junipers yeah right any of the needle that are kind of all conifers all conifers yes all mm-hmm. conifers right um japanese maple right yep Jump mm-hmm. dogwoods dogwoods yeah dogwoods oh, wow. and that there's also like hydrangeas kind of fall into two different camps here, right? <laughs> if you want right. a blue hydrangea, yeah. you use a, an acidic base acidic. fertilizer like yeah. Holly Tone, where yeah. and and it sounds nasty. I mean, acidic <laughs> these days when everything, oh, we want oh. it organic. I want <laughs> yeah, that. That's right. All it means is that the pH, like Julio said, yeah. is is going to be below below neutral, so that it's got that's right. That yeah. pH. <laughs> Don't is, panic on the yeah, acid part, not, right? <laughs> it's not like a dangerous thing. No, it isn't. <laughs> but it, it, it's important that you're doing this because oh, yeah. s- your plants get depleted and uh, of nutrient value because those roots are growing. Some of your plants are older. Yeah, and don't are. just stop just because you have an, a mature landscape. Oh, yeah. Now is the time yeah. to do it. That's right. Because you want to build flowers. Yeah. You want to build nice, healthy mm-hmm. plants. Leaves, yep. Best defense against disease and insects is a healthy growing plant because yes, it, it can is. outgrow most of the problems. Mm-hmm. If you've got something that's starving, oh, you weak. know, right? it, it yeah. succumbs to an insect that comes along uh, and it can't outgrow it. Right. So put those uh, fertilizers on there. Now's the right. time, right? Now say I want a pink hydrangea. What do I do? Uh, you're going to have to raise the pH level. Okay. Then yeah. how, do I, how do I do that? Uh, you can put a little lime, you know, a little bit of lime. A little lime, yeah. right? And so what fertilizer do I use? Because lime is, is not technically a nutrient. No, it isn't. It, uh, but plant tone plant would plant be tone. an ideal yeah, thing. Plant tone, yeah. Right? You could use bone meal. Bone meal, yeah. Because that, that would work to, right. to a certain. It doesn't have as wide a, you know, NPK on it. No, it doesn't. But there's also... Uh, different types of fertilizers that that you would use uh, organically. You could use things like a cow manure or a uh-huh. uh, or a compost to improve that soil, and that nutrient value as it breaks down is released through that compost. It's not necessarily like a fertilizer where yeah. it's available quickly, right. but it will improve the tilt of the soil, but it also will work itself in. Right. Nice. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Slo- slower, slower uh, release. Yeah, slower release, uh-huh. but it, it, a little more work. A little more work. Those mm-hmm. of you who are dedicated to do it, 
Those of you who are lazy like me, just throw down Holly Tone and be happy with the blue uh, <laughs> with blue hydrangeas. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, it's it's really important that uh-huh. uh, you take care of your shrubs right oh, now. Yeah. It's not all about the lawn. Yeah. Uh, perennials as well. Perennials. Yeah. Now is the time where some th- mm-hmm. some things are because of the lack of sunlight. Right. Do you notice how dark it is early? Oh, it is very. I was up at six o'clock not too long dark. ago, and it was still light. I now know. it's like, like uh, nighttime, and I, I don't want to get up. No, you're in bed, huh? Yeah, <laughs> but what happens is those perennials. Some of those perennials, right. and you see our trees starting to change color. Yeah, very much. And it's not because it's been so cold; it's because that light, light. is now changing. That's right. Less light. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so with that, perennials are going dormant. That's right. Yeah. And you need to feed them, feed them. because their roots are still, still active. Growing, yes. Roots are still active. Now could be a, t- a time to divide some perennials. That's right. Yeah, mm-hmm. you, it, you go through and divide them yes. or mark them for division for, for, for maybe later. Mm-hmm. Because what's yeah. going to happen? They're going to just disappear. Disappear, yeah, go on. But feed them, feed yep. them, feed, feed them, them, feed them. Yep. It's a great time to plant, though. It is. And it, it is a great uh, time to plant. But we're going to talk about that in the next segment that's coming up. Yeah. But, love it, but, love it. But really, feeding is something that's neglected Very for so. established plants. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times you won't get as nice of and full a, a foundation landscape if you're not feeding. Okay. It'll get leggy. It'll get yellowish. It'll yeah. get chlorotic. Um it will be more visible visible to to uh-huh. shedding, shedding. On, mm-hmm. in that rather than being that nice crisp dark green leaf that you're looking for oh, it's yes. going to look on the mm-hmm. yellowish side yep. Yep. feed your plants right. feed your feed your landscape uh, right feed Always. your landscape yep. spring and fall right spring and fall mm-hmm. and that each plant n- is going to need a unique diet a diet right we talked per- about that perennials Again, plant tone. Plant tone, yeah, great for that. Plant tone. Mm -hmm. And for the majority of your landscape plants is going to be holly tone. Yep. Yep. Wonderful. And if you spill a little bit of holly tone... On your perennials, mm-hmm. it's not going to be, yeah. it's not a crisis situation. No, you don't have to rake it up. <laughs> if right. you spill a whole bag, maybe. Oh, but maybe, right. Again, the beautiful <laughs> thing about holly tone and plant tone, they're from a spoma, and they you are know, all, all organic. Organic, yes. All wonderful. organic. Yep, we love it. it. That is a great thing. Great yeah. company. It is. Great company. Yep, local. Right in Millville, New Millville, Jersey. New Jersey. Yes, sir. But yeah. nationwide. Mm-hmm. Nationwide. Yeah. Yep, been around a long time. 1929, right? That's right. That's right. Boy, think about that. Would you want to start a company right, <laughs> right, right at the <laughs> when the crash of the stock market? Oh, brother. Boy, talk about brave folks. That's right. <laughs> All right. Our next segment is coming up, uh, and that we'll be right back right after this. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Are you tired of mice moving into your home with you every fall? Would you like to keep them from coming into your home? Do you dislike using mouse killers around your kids and pets? Bonod has the answer, Mouse Magic. Mouse Magic is an all-natural mouse repellent that keeps mice from coming into your home, summer cabins, cars, boats, RVs, farm equipment, garden sheds, and more. Mouse Magic has a pleasant aroma, which smells like spearmint and peppermint, but mice hate it. Mouse Magic repels by smell and works as an irritant that drives mice away. Just use one throw pack per average size room and you are mouse free for up to two months. Available in a four pack box or a 12 pack economy Ziploc bag. Bonide products are family made in America. Mouse Magic can be found at these fine stores. Dambly's Garden Center, Berlin, New Jersey. Raritan Valley Agway, Raritan, New Jersey. Rosedale Mills, Pennington, New Jersey. Or go to bonide.com to find a retailer near you. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. 
let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Well, Leo, we were just talking about uh, mice. I know we were. Right? <laughs> you're during, home. during the break, we were talking about mice. Uh, you're in your home, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I uh, caught a mouse uh, in my house. So oh and I told you there's a moose loose in the hoose. <laughs> <laughs> Bugs Bunny fan, oh, come on. Oh, we love it. No. <laughs> anyway, yeah. that, uh, yeah, so mice want to come in and, yes, and do. insects. Oh, yeah. you know what's uh, coming in? Stink bugs. Stink bugs, yeah. Stink bugs are yeah, coming in. So I've make sure that. you're. Guarding your home from right. stink bugs. Oh, Last boy. week we talked about spotted lantern, lantern fly. We saw them here. Yeah, yeah. step yeah. on them, kill them. Kill them, get rid of them. That's right. Yeah. They are Nuisance, bad, bad bug. Terrible. Bad bug. Well, you know, in this segment, the weather is finally killing off those annuals. Yes, it and it's yeah. just, they're just looking. It's yeah. it's more, again, sunlight. Yeah. Sunlight, sunlight changing. changing. So changing. you want to put in... Plants. I mean, people have been planting mums for the last month. Oh, yes. But now there's more room than ever. And there's yeah. so many choices. It used to be you, you had mums. That's it. It was mums. We have mums, and there's yellow mums, and there's purple <laughs> mums, <laughs> and there's white mums. Uh-huh. You know, <laughs> that's it. But now there's every color of the rainbow mums. Oh, you know, everything yeah. except for blue. But blue, right. there's a pale lavender that pale lavender is a, looks like it. <laughs> you know, one man's blue. Uh-huh. But there's also winter pansies. Yes. Oh, wonderful. Cabbage and kale. Cabbage and kale. Celosia. Celosia. Oh, wonderful. There's so many different choices. Yeah. And ornamental peppers. Oh, ornamental peppers, peppers, yeah, all over. All kind of colors, yeah. Huh? And uh, Orange, I mean, yellow. we've never sold as many Dracaena spikes in the fall as we have this yeah. year. <laughs> <Is that laughs> I mean, it's like <laughs> they uh, are not just for spring anymore. No, they're not. So yeah. planting in, in the ground, oh. my favorite thing is pansies. Yeah. Like and mums are great. Mums are a show off in the garden. They they, they look spectacular now. And and like I said, there are so many colors. Like if you're looking on on YouTube, that we have uh, that beautiful. It's it's almost a mix of yellow and like a brown with a brown yeah. center. Like the buds are brown, yeah. and they open up to a yellow. Oh. But while they're opening up, the center is a little brown. I mean, it's oh, stunning. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Almost Thanksgiving color. It, it is. It almost yeah. Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving color. Yeah. And that's the one thing with mums that, that they will persist, you know, to about, you know, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving. depending on the weather. Yeah, right. Where cabbage and kale, they'll oh. persist past Christmas. Christmas, yeah. January. Just <laughs> just like just like the regular cabbage uh-huh. and kale that you would plant to eat, eat. This is the same type of plant, just grown for an or, as an ornamental purpose. Ornamental. Yeah. Yep. Very nice. Yeah. Yep. We had our segment a few weeks ago where we talked about planting a garnish. A garnish, yeah, <laughs> we were that's right. right. We yeah, had our planting garnish. a garnish segment, yeah, and that. that's right up there at cabbage and kale. Cabbage and kale, yeah. And that they do they do really grow. But I like pansies mm-hmm. simply because you get the color now, uh-huh. and they'll continue to flower until it gets really cold, and it's mostly the wind that will take the flowers right. off. Yeah, and mm-hmm. that you know it's hard to say when that will happen, just simply yeah. because it depends on the weather. Yeah. But they come back and flower like gangbusters in the in the spring. spring so yeah. you're, when everything else is looking kind of tired, mm-hmm. all of a sudden you've got these flowers coming up Boom. that you forgot about the pansies <laughs> that right. you put in, and now uh-huh. they're looking fantastic. That's great, isn't it? If you've got combo pots or things that are mm-hmm. outside, that's why I, I put, would put some, in. I'd mm-hmm. put some pansies there. Yeah. I'd, I'd maybe you know we're going to talk about bulbs in our next segment, but yeah. uh, maybe put some. Some bulbs underneath. Yeah, underneath that. Pansies are pansies are a great part. Oh yeah, they are. They are. Yeah, as we yeah. say, a name like pansies, they've got to be tough. Tough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, we need need to get the boy named Sue segment. That's right. Yeah, boom, playing boom, behind boom. that. <laughs> um, now, are you planting anything at your house? Uh, did you plant any mums or anything yet? Not yet. It was too warm. It, like it I, was. I wasn't into the uh, you know fall right. feel yet. You yeah, know what I, mean? I understand. I, I think, understand. Uh, I think this week looks like a, you know, colder, yeah, yeah finally. weather. Yeah, finally. Yeah, finally. 
I'll tell you what, with moms, right. you got to make sure you keep them watered. That's right. Because those little balls that are the actual buds, they uh-huh. all of a sudden flag down. Uh-huh. And if you let it dry out, it's not going to open. It's not going to come back. Yeah. It's not going to back. The plant will live. Yeah. You know, and what do we say about moms? Uh, they're disposable, right? That's right. <laughs> we like- Listen, if you want to get your moms to come back because you think it's fun, go ahead. Yeah, no problem. But they are going to be green mm-hmm. plants. <laughs> until, <laughs> until until when? September, September of right? next year, and you need yeah. to trim them, and you need and, and that for the, yeah. I mean, for four or five bucks, throw them uh, out, buy new ones. Out. Yeah, and it, it's because they're just if you put them in the backyard somewhere where you don't have anything yeah. planted, and then it just you know they're a nice surprise in the in the fall. Can be. That's nice. Can be, yeah, but not bad. I don't but, know. Yeah. It's uh, just, they're uh, <laughs> euthanize them, right? Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> euthanize those there plants. You go. <laughs> I don't know. It's it is um, it's a good plant because it has such great fall color. It does. Yeah. But um, yeah, like you were saying, there's so many colors now. You can oh, <laughs> you can right. pick any one. I don't want to have to decide like because I feel guilty mm-hmm. killing my mom yeah, and or I should I put in my annuals in the spring? Right. Guess what, mom. You're out of You're there. Out of there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So this mom you can yeah. abuse. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's all it's all about the fall, right? It's it all is. about the fall. It is and just enjoy it for the fall. Yeah, and enjoy then, for the fall. Yep. Pansies yeah. on the and pansies are, are actually like that too, because yeah. they'll flower now and then again in the spring. Right. But then when it gets hot, they Boom. disappear. Yep. So after your pl- your when you're ready to plant your regular annuals, dispose of your pansies, yeah. Um, yeah. because again they'll just it's the heat that bothers the heat them, not the cold, them. yeah, not the cold, yeah. So all right, all right. segment coming up, Ooh. talking about bulbs, all my right. favorite. Yeah, I think it's just because I'm Dutch. <laughs> is that what it is? It might be. Yeah, it could it might be. be. I think so. It's in the blood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, we'll be right back right after this. Tired of pale green, weedy results from four-step lawn programs? That's because they don't do anything for the soil. The New American Lawn four-step program feeds the lawn and the soil. MagiCal Plus, a unique soil food that adjusts soil pH, loosens hard soil, and feeds soil microbes is the key difference. Without the right soil conditions, you'll never enjoy a great lawn. Competitive programs simply don't match up. So feed your lawn and your soil with the new American Lawn 4-Step Program by Jonathan Green. Jonathan Green products can be found at these fine stores. Action Hardware, Wilmington, Delaware. Hokessen Hardware, Hokessen, Delaware. Gaspers Garden Center, Richboro, Pennsylvania. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. We are back, folks. And here on Bloomers in the Garden, we suggest planting balls when it's cool, almost cold outside, huh, Len? That's right. That's right. Yeah. You do it too soon, mm-hmm. the bulbs can even rot yeah. in the ground. We don't, and you don't want that. Yeah, you don't. Um, last year, we planted in front of Bloomers seven thousand tulips. <laughs> oh, wow! They looked awesome, didn't they? Oh, beautiful! It, 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 people would stop and take stop. pictures, and yeah, it was it, awesome, huh? Yeah, and uh, that, they'll be back they'll because be back, yeah. tulips mm-hmm. will come back the second year, yeah. sometimes the third year. And what happens is that the bulb splits, and you don't always get, get that the next year. Then it's just leaves. Uh. But if you know that, you want to try to yeah. split those tulips and have bulblets and yeah. grow them on. The, uh-huh. That's how they reproduce. That's right. <laughs> reproduce. Tulips are good because oh, they, yeah. they're, they're easy to, to put in. Yep. They're, they have a little point. So little you point. know which side, which way to which stick way them. To stick it in there, right? <laughs> that's right. Always point up. Oh, point up. Eh? On all right. bulbs. That's right. Make the point up. 
And there's right. always going to be spot on a bulb where the roots came out. Right. And if you look real close, you can tell. The bottom, yes. Daffodils will have that point yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. one thing, um, we we want to make sure that you do it right. Yeah. And that if you use the technique to where you're going two to three times the depth of the bulb, mm-hmm. probably, probably two times two maybe. Times. Yeah, depends. Yeah. Uh, two to three times the depth of the bulb, you'll you'll be okay. Good. Uh, and that always point up. Point up. All the and time. Yeah. the way that uh, we planned our bulbs, even though, Donnie, if you're out there, I know you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> you you didn't want to do it this way, but yeah. I'm glad you did. Thank you, yeah. because that's why it looks so good. Yeah, it did look <laughs> gorgeous. So did that that uh, oh. Donnie was out there, and it was like, no, we're just going to put them in with a bulb planter. Yeah. I was like, no, I want you to take a section of soil <laughs> out, place the place bulbs, yeah. then put that section of soil back, back and in, then just yeah. keep working that way. That was so cool, huh? Yeah. And, <laughs> and that, uh, you know, like I said, that the, the guys weren't real happy about it because yeah. they were moving the entire, you know, front of all the soil. <laughs> all the but soil. It, it just works so much better. It works so much better in that you can see where the bulbs are coming up. Yeah. Um, our guys did a great job. Yeah, they did. Stunning. It was stunning, like you're saying. Yep. Oh. Yep. We had so many people saying, oh, look at, oh, my goodness. Hey, you, early. They'll early, be back. Yep. They'll and be back. Early, but, early spring. Yep. We love it. They'll be sometime probably March, April. March, April. Yeah, you can't beat that. Yeah. Have you ever seen a lawn that has crocus that are coming up in early spring instead? I, you don't see it as much, Lynn. It's, I, it's an old-fashioned thing. Yeah, it is. It's gorgeous because you don't cut your grass uh-huh. you know this the crocus will be up uh-huh. will be flowering and your grass isn't time isn't to cut it yet. so it's just like it's like this little thing that said hey look spring's here that's right <laughs> <laughs> look, at yeah, yeah, look at me yeah look at me and that, little, that that's little colors coming up <laughs> yeah i mean grass. that's something something to try like you can yeah. like peel some some of your grass back like sod uh-huh. and then plant some yeah, crocus yeah, yeah. Oh, in strategic spots Thinking about doing that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's great. Yeah. yeah. My my grubs have uh, <laughs> have created <laughs> sections for me. <laughs> yeah. That's easy, huh? Yeah, I've got some <laughs> open areas that I'll be there able to, to put some go, crocus folks. in. See what you can do? That's right. <laughs> that's right. And uh, and where crocus come back, they, they're yeah. a real, real not real like a, where you don't have to split them or you don't get just a few years out of them like a tulip. Uh, um, more like uh, Narcissus. Narcissus, yeah. Or daffodil, Daffodils, where yeah. they come back they come year back after year for years, like loyal years. friends. They're yeah. they're they're there to greet you every. You have to love that, huh? Yep, every every spring that that yeah. they're that they're there. Yeah, um, hyacinths can be a little more independent. Mm-hmm. That uh, they're a big fat bulb. That uh, sometimes, <laughs> if if it's a wet year, they you have a problem. But uh, real fragrant. Fragrant. Oh, um, we yeah. have, did you notice the ones that we have in our, we have them actually planted in a parking lot yes, we area yeah. where it gets absolutely no attention. Oh. And they've been coming up now for probably Long. six, seven years. At least. Without any attention. We don't. None. Yeah, I'm, I'm embarrassed to say, but we don't <laughs> feed them. We didn't you do should. anything to them. No. It was, we had a bunch left over and I was uh-huh. like, ah, oh, put them over there. Over there. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> and that's where, that's, that's what where happened. That's where they are. Uh-huh. So, again, the colors. Oh, the colors. Stunning. You know, where we think Easter and hyacinths and the big fragrant flower that yeah. we, we always get. Mm-hmm. And it's usually... It's going to be blue, blue. and it's going to be uh, in a pink, pink and a white. White, that's it. That's it. But now hyacinths wow. are oh. like an almost like a peachy color or maroon. Uh, like we have a, a mix of mix. Oh, hyacinths. Mix. Yeah, <laughs> tequila sunrise mix. So oh, if it gives okay. you an idea, it definitely is not the, uh, the <laughs> pink and blue. Pink and blue right? <laughs> it's yellows and and the, like almost like a peach orange uh, nice. and a magenta mix. Uh-huh. Same wow. thing, real fragrant, same type of flower. Thing, huh? Just, uh, just again, something new, something, something different, great. something yeah. to try. Mm-hmm. Yeah, get out there, folks, and uh, now's the time, right? Yeah, well, well we're, we're almost there. I would wait. I, I, I would wait till after the first frost. Okay. Um, you still have time. Yeah. Oh, Good. lots of time. Yep. But your your selection of bulbs may be running out. Oh. So get out to your local garden center and buy right. your bulbs That's now. Right. Yes. Buy your mm-hmm. bulbs now. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, I, I like the idea of taking, uh-huh. like, say, um, if you take, like, a pink short, you know, maybe an 
eight to ten inch right. tulip, uh-huh. right? Pink right. flower. Pink flower, yeah. And nice. you put those in the ground, uh-huh. and over top of them, you put a nice blue with a blotch faced pansy on top. Ooh. Wow. So what'll happen is that those tulips will uh-huh. grow through the pansies, and the pansies will be all in bloom around the base in the spring with uh-huh. the tulips blooming on top. Wow, that's wonderful. Yeah. Wow, I like that idea. Yeah. Wow. Super. Containers, planting them in containers. Uh, another like, one, yeah. Like a lot of times, like our, our combo pots, if, if we haven't done anything with them, even yeah. if you go and you, you put them in under a mum or something like that, mm-hmm. or or if you're going to, like Julio and I suggest, ripping that mum out and yep. putting something else in, right. go ahead and go ahead and do, it. Go ahead mm-hmm. and do that. Or yeah. if you put something temporary like cabbage and kale, that will last long so right. you can plant your bulbs underneath, underneath that cabbage that. and kale and then when the cabbage and kale starts you know smelling like a little <laughs> too old sauerkraut that's right. that it's time to throw them throw them away yeah. that you've got that mix under there and then just see if you can find some pansies and put them on top look at that that'll look nice yeah a lot of great ideas huh? just continuing that color and into the season extending it that's wonderful that's right and yeah. you got to remember you want to feed your bulbs too oh yes feed the bulbs yeah the yeah. power is in that bulb but mm-hmm. what they're doing is they want to build roots Strong to connect roots. into your soil that's right. right now mm-hmm. so you want to put down like a spoma bulb tone right. great fertilizer all organic mm-hmm. you want to use bulb to- uh, right. regular bone meal that works fine mm-hmm. sure. um but I would probably choose bulb tone. Bulb tone's great. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's, um, I, 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 there's more nutrient value in that. Uh-huh. Uh, it's, it's different. If you need a little more calcium, you, right. you'd use maybe bone meal. Uh-huh. Eh, eh, either yeah, one. Either one. You yeah, can't screw it. work. Yeah. You could even do plant tone. If you've got plant tone yeah, left there, you can use that. that. Sure. Yeah. All right. So go buy your bulbs this weekend. Yeah. Go to your buy local them. garden center. Mm-hmm. Sure. Tell them you heard it on Bloomers in the Garden, yeah. and you're going to pick out your bulbs now. Yep. All right. We'll be right there back right after this. Fall is for planting. Bloomers Blend Township Turf Grass Seed is perfect for your lawn, no matter if you have sun or part shade. Township Turf germinates quickly in less than 10 days and provides a dark green, fine-bladed, durable turf. Township Turf is a blend of the best ryegrass, tall fescues, and bluegrass, and looks so good many people think it's sod. Visit Bloomers Nursery and let one of Bloomers Nurserymen help you lay out your next landscape project. Bloomers has the finest selection of fall flowers. Hardy mums in multiple sizes, celosia, coxcomb, winter pansies, ornamental peppers, ornamental kale and cabbage, and all types of grasses. Bloomers has a frightening large selection of face pumpkins, flat stacking pumpkins, gourds, and fall decorating items. Come visit Bloomers, the store behind the radio program, open seven days. Go to www.bloomers.com. That's www.bloomers.com. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. See me in Julio down by the yeah, we'll get, get the ear things on them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're back in the garden. <laughs> we're sitting here talking about bulbs and yeah. which bulbs we're going to plant. Oh, uh, yeah. Isn't that great? <laughs> you know, lots and lots of stuff to, to uh, do this week. There is. Get your lawn going, and, right. and it's time with this cooler weather that yeah. you'll be able to get uh, some seed started. That's right. Right? Get seed going. Yeah, get that going before it gets too, too cold. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't do anything. Again, it's about soil temperature, not yeah. so much air temperature. So even yeah. that sun is going to radiate on the on the soil right. and keep it warm enough so Warmer. that seed will germinate. Good. Go out and get your bulbs. Get go to your bulbs. garden center. And the reason why I say go to your garden center is because garden centers know how to handle the bulbs. Sure. Where sometimes if they're a commodity and they're just at some places that sell more lumber than they do to tulip <laughs> bulbs, right. that they won't know how to handle them. <laughs> and they'll. Right. I'll never forget seeing them right underneath the heater uh-huh. uh, where they have one of those radiant heaters, oh, and they're wow. all dried out, oh, and they're, no. they're being oh, sold. Brother. It's like, oh, look, yeah. come get them. <laughs> yeah. like, and people say, I don't, oh, yeah. I never have luck with bulbs, and it's because they're it's buying them in the wrong place. Right. 
Go to your local garden center, mm, yeah. your local independent garden center. Tell That's them right. bloomers in the garden sent you, and, and then and you'll get good bulbs good and you'll have good yep. success. Good Dutch bulbs, yes. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Hey, next week we're going to talk about pumpkins. Oh, yeah. It's our favorite. Yep. Yeah, we love it. Yeah, not only the orange pumpkins, no. but gourds and all those different, like, Unique pumpkins, stackable oh, yes. pumpkins. Yeah, we have white pumpkins, folks. Yes, some yeah, red right. lines on them, or what are they like? Those got, snake uh, gourds. Snake gourds. Oh my goodness, they're really... snake ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Brett, oh. thank you very much today. Appreciate it. Thank you, Brett. <laughs> All right. All right. And we'll see you in the garden. We'll see you in the garden. Fall is for planting. Bloomers Blend Township Turf Grass Seed is perfect for your lawn. No matter if you have sun or part shade, Township Turf germinates quickly in less than 10 days and provides a dark green, fine-bladed, durable turf. Township Turf is a blend of the best ryegrass, tall fescues, and bluegrass and looks so good many people think it's sod. Visit Bloomers Nursery and let one of Bloomers Nurserymen help you lay out your next landscape project. Bloomers has the finest selection of fall flowers. Hardy mums in multiple sizes, celosia, coxcomb, winter pansies, ornamental peppers, ornamental kale and cabbage, and all types of grasses. Bloomers has a frightening large selection of face pumpkins, flat stacking pumpkins, gourds, and fall decorating items. Come visit Bloomers, the store behind the radio program, open seven days. Go to www.bloomers.com. That's www.bloomers.com. Bloomers in the Garden is an hour-long gardening radio program that airs to over 6 million residents throughout the Delaware Valley. From Allentown to Wilmington, from the Main Line to the Jersey Shore, Bloomers in the Garden can be heard twice each Saturday morning, first at 8 a.m. on 860 WWDB and again at 9 on 610 a.m. ESPN Radio. Each episode of Bloomers in the Garden will be broadcast on Bloomers' Facebook page and available as a podcast on bloomersinthegarden.com. Bloomers in the Garden is adding sponsors. Share your message to our large, diverse group of listeners. Commercials and segment sponsorships are available at incredibly affordable prices. Let Bloomers in the Garden get your message out to one of the largest and most diverse populations in the country. If you're interested in joining us in the garden, please visit bloomersinthegarden.com or email len at bloomers.com. The first person to survive Alzheimer's disease is out there. They might even be listening to this right now. Maybe they're waiting for the traffic light to change. Maybe they're daydreaming about a trip they've planned with their family. Maybe they're in a toddler seat, strapped in and wondering if they're almost home. That first survivor is out there and they're going to hold on to everything the disease steals away. And the Alzheimer's Association is going to make it happen by funding research, advancing public policy, and spurring scientific breakthroughs, and by providing local support right now to those living with the disease and their caregivers, we're easing the burden for all those facing it until we accomplish our goal. Alzheimer's disease has devastated millions of lives, but that's all going to change when we reach the first survivor. But we won't get there without you. Visit alz.org to join the fight.